Uh, Mr. Dan Richardson. I'll be as quick as I can, huh? Maybe I can answer some of your questions. They might I not let me ask any more questions. I'm Dan Richardson. I live in Greenwood, South Carolina. I'm retired military. Uh, got a lot of grandkids and kids, and I'm concerned about my politicians. I'm concerned about uh, about everything in life. I fear my God. God, the fear of God is is the beginning of knowledge. I don't fear what could happen to an Article 5 convention because I know exactly what could happen to it based on experiences. <clears throat> I laid back for the past few years from my labors where I attempted to save my constitutional republic of South Carolina. It is a republic. It's not a democracy. Uh, I worked 20 solid years from 1984 to 2004. The gentleman wants to know about 2004. Well, South Carolina had 11 calls for a federal constitutional convention. 11. Did you know that? Huh? I had more stumbling blocks than you can imagine. Lies upon lies, deception upon deception, and I've got it all documented if anybody wants to know how it works. I know how the legislature works. I've been, man, from 84 to 2010, I worked with them. A lot of new faces here now. Uh, make it short. It started with a balanced budget amount. I got to look in it, at the way legislatures voted, and it was mentioned that very few of them hit the 100 percent vote in the courts of the Constitution. Very few. There's only right now, I think, maybe three in the whole legislature in the U.S. Congress that voted 100 percent. Three out of how many? 435? Most of them vote in the 30 percent area, and we got some right here in South Carolina. Okay. That's our problem uh, in part, okay? But it goes back to amending the Constitution, 1913 and 1915. We created the 16th Amendment. That's income tax, right? That's illegal according to the Constitution. And I'm getting off track here a little bit, but the 17th Amendment is the one that really screwed the state. Because you guys, as legislatures, appointed the senator. And when he didn't vote 100 percent to support the Constitution, you said, come on home, Lindsay, or Thurman, or whoever. Y'all got that? I mean, I hope y'all do. You understand that? Okay, I'm going to go on to something else. I've got some of these things here I want to pass out to you. And this documents, uh, you want to hand these out to them, please? Thank you. <clears throat> I'm, I'm trying to hurry along here. Okay. So my wife's at home up there in that tornado area, okay, in Greenwood. This little document right here was, uh, was passed by the state legislature and the House and the Senate in 2004, and it was signed into law by Governor Mark Sanford. And I was present when he wa I watched him sign it. He didn't give me a pen, though, okay? Okay, so, okay. Uh, I wish he had a. Our, our, our major problem, it says, America's founding ideals, our priceless constitution is based on the fundamental principle, principles that still rule today, okay? Part of that, Congress were, was to guide its every action by the powers allotted to it by the Constitution. Power of the purse, power of the purse. The budget will never be balanced as long as serious cuts that must be made are postponed by future Congresses, okay? Future Congresses, they keep pushing it down the road, okay? As a member, it takes, as a reminder of it, it takes 50% of the votes. This has been covered, so I'm gonna drop that off, okay? But remember, 50% of the House members in one vote and they can balance the budget from each day, each bill. Start with, it ought to be a constitutional requirement in every bill that's passed. Right here in South Carolina, 
to find out how it's going to affect the budget in South Carolina. Our problem has nothing to do with the Constitution. Our problem has to do with ignoring the Constitution. Okay, we are ignoring the Constitution unless we want to find some little thing in there that's applicable, okay? We only need to adhere to it. I gave you one of these little things here. It says, uh, Constitutional Convention is not a procedure for making a small change. You can't make a small change with a convention. You can't limit what goes on with one item. I've got a document here from Chief Justice Warren Burger in 1976. You remember we had the Constitutional Convention uh, uh, ceremony for the celebrating the age? Warren Burger chaired that centennial convention. And he said that there was no way to limit a constitutional convention once it's called by the state. And when you call, I've discussed this with David Wilkins, former Speaker of the House, Bobby Harrell, former Speaker of the House. We went through this for 20 solid years before I got an answer. And they finally agreed, and this was in 2004. I beat on the legislature's doors. I mean, like these guys with the COS stuff. I mean, that, all they're doing, it's an Article 5 convention. No matter what they say, what kind of handle they put on it, it's still going to be an Article 5 action that you guys got to do. And if you do it, you can't stop it. You can't control it. No way. And, and I'm, not, I'm not the legal expert on it, okay? Uh, I've, do you realize that we had... The balanced budget amendment on record since 1916. We had a uh, requesting an Article 5 convention since 1916 in South Carolina. And it was for the whole thing. Anti-polygamy. Okay. I mean, that's great, isn't it? But it was there. And a lot of the states jumped on the bandwagon. It, it's an emotional thing. I'm getting emotional myself, okay? And then they had limited taxation. They had one for that, I recall. That was in 1962. From 62 to 76, 78, that's when most of this stuff came about. For lack of knowledge, people perish. And we don't understand our Constitution. Seriously, we don't understand it. We're not educating our kids in school. I've, I've been on the school board. I mean, I can't... South Carolina doesn't even demand a student learn uh, tested for reading th until after the second grade. I mean, that's, this is absurd, okay? We don't teach them constitutional law. We don't teach them hardly anything except socialism. Okay, anyway, you want to know about why the, we had a recension of 11 calls for a convention? It was me, man, me and a few other people. Mo we had started out with a couple hundred. I went to a state convention. I'm, 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 I, I want to be respectful, sir, but I, you're about I to go off again. I, right, no, not you're about to go off. The Lord is okay, about to go let off. Okay, let me take All right. A South Carolina GOP convention, okay? I was denied as a debt committeeman for the party, okay? For years and years. I was denied to introduce a rule for the rules committee to be presented to the convention. Okay, even though prior to that, I'd actually served as a rules committee chairman and uh, procedures, all kind of stuff, okay? Anyway, at the convention, I was denied to introduce a resolution before the floor by David Wilkins. Okay, he was served two packs. Two pa I'm going to tell you why, okay? P please, please bear with me. He denied me that right. To show you how hard it is, I sat down. And the next two people got up, introduced resolutions from the floor. They just got to tell me you couldn't take a resolution from the floor. I wasn't doing what they liked, in other words, okay. So finally, I jumped up, and I said on the third go-round, I said, here I am again, Mr. Speaker. And, uh, and I'd work the convention. And they said, let him speak. Let him speak. And I introduced a resolution. And it passed. Unanimous vote. Not one vote in that whole crowd voted against it. And I imagine there's somebody here might have been here at one time. 
Praise the Lord for all these mighty things. Please don't vote for this Article 5 convention. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. And finally, we got Mr. Keith Traver. Keith Traver.